question. How many people could do about 60, 70 push-ups in a row? Raise your hand. Don't be modest. Oh, I can. What do you know? Just one of my many, many talents. But yeah, I can do about 60, 70 push-ups in a row. And yeah, I'm someone who exercises on a regular basis for about three to five days out of the week. You may even see me at DOIC gym at Harrison Street. If you do, please say hello. Or if I'm running, then get out of my way. I don't want to run you down. But yeah, and push-ups are one of many exercises that I do. And I do it because it's good for your shoulders, your chest, and your triceps. You hit all those things. And additionally, they also, you also don't need any equipment. You don't need to buy anything. You can do them anywhere. I could do them right here if I wanted to. And all you really need is your body. But push-ups done wrong, well, you can damage your shoulder and you can pretty much be really ineffective. The three things you need to remember when doing the push-up are one, aligning your hands and elbows properly, two, getting in the right stance, especially when it comes to your back and your butt, and three, going in the proper motion. Now the first thing you're going to do when you're going to do a push-up is of course you're going to get on your knees and you're going to put your hands down. Now it's very, very important that you put your hands about right here, like a little below your chest, but still by your ribs, and about shoulder length apart, no more than shoulder length apart. And you also want to keep your elbows tucked in or at a 45 degree angle. And the reason you want to do that is because if you put your elbows like this, which looks weird, and if you put it like this, well, you put all the stress on your shoulders. and it's very, very easy to damage your shoulders when you put all the stress on it and you will pay for it later on in life. And you don't want your excuse to be able to do a push up properly. That's pretty sad. And so putting this little, like about shoulder length and having your elbows in or at a 45 degree angle puts most of the stress on your triceps. And it should look something like this. See that? Perfectly aligned and everything. Now, after you do that, well, you're going to raise up and go into your stance. Now, the one thing to remember, and I cannot stress this enough, for the love of God, don't do this. Do not stick your butt up in the air. Ladies, I don't mean to be sexist, but I see you do this more than men. Sorry, but it, it completely takes away the effectiveness of the exercise. I mean... Look at that, my head's going to hit the floor if I do that. And you don't go all the way down either. And additionally, when you're in that position, you're also more susceptible to cutting a fart too. So not only does it look bad, but you also smell terrible as well. So please don't do that. You want your butt to be flat. And additionally, you want your back to be flat too. You don't want your back to arc in because you're not doing yoga. and. You don't want your back to bulge out. You're not Quasimodo. You don't live in a cathedral, Notre Dame. You shouldn't have your back bulge out. It should be like your butt. It should be flat and look like an almost an inclined plane, like this. And my back looks like it's bulging out, but that's the way my back is. It's really big. And additionally, now once you have your stance, you're ready to go in motion. Now, when you go in motion, it's very, very important that you keep your hips locked. Don't do this. And imagine that visual on the floor. I don't need to tell everyone what that looks like. If that's your thing, I'm not judging, but yeah, don't do that. Little kids tend to do that a lot. And again, you, you take the, the stress and anything you're going to do for your chest out of the equation. So you want to keep your hips locked and stationary. And furthermore, you also want to keep your abs relax. You don't want to tighten your abs. That's less obvious than moving your hips. But yeah, keep it relaxed too. You're not working out your abs and it's going to take away from hitting your chest. And additionally, now when, you're, when you know that, you're going to use mainly your arms. Your arms are strong enough to do that, or mine are at least, but you're going to use mainly your arms. And you're going to go down with your chest almost touching your, the floor. It's not going to touch the floor. It's almost going to touch it. And it's going to look like this. Look at that. 
beautiful, is it not, folks? Hand aligned, the back perfect, butt flat. I mean, it looks beautiful, but I'm a handsome guy. But yeah, you want to back to that. And you'll also notice that I went at a, an appropriate pace as well. If you go too fast, you're going to get some momentum. And when you get momentum, that's going to help you go up and down. And of course, yeah, it's not going to be all you're doing it, so you have to do significantly more. In addition to that, you're also not typically not going to go all the way up or down. So you're going to have to do significantly more push-ups to get the job done. So hopefully now everyone knows the importance of doing, of aligning your hands right, having your back and your butt flat so you can have a good stance, and and going in a proper motion, so now you can get the maximum benefit out of this exercise without hurting your shoulders. And you can also impress people. Ladies, 